<clears throat> Hello, my name is Christopher Cutts. We're at the Christopher Cutts Gallery and we're in the exhibit called Harold Town Unlocking the 70s. Now that we have a couple of stretches behind me, I just wanted to say a few things about them. Um, both of these stretches were made in 1969. That body of work was probably about 68 to about uh, 1970. Now these particular works, as you can see, have a great deal of tension. They have these almost like elongated teardrops that meet one another. And of course you see a set of complementary colors there, that green and the red, have got a lot of vibration, a lot of energy in it as well. But then with the tension of these two elongated teardrops sort of just about meeting each other, but it's almost like they're magnets and they're just pushing against one another. You look over here, we have a, a yellow one with this wonderful kind of powdery blue quality. And then as you see the ones in each one of the corners, they come and they just hit and then they once again just curve off and pull back down. Now these works of course are very simple in their composition. However, there is a great deal of energy in the paintings created as a result through this tension that's uh, both through color juxtaposition and also the intensity of the line and the stretching of the line and also the sort of the repulsion of the works. I'm now standing in front of one of Harold's silent light paintings. The anecdote behind the silent light work is that uh, Harold was uh, well known for his Christmas trees that he heavily decorated and back in 1966 one of his heavily decorated trees came crashing down and it created <laughs> quite a spectacle. Um, and while he was cleaning up the nest he was taken by the dazzling reflection of lights because he put lots of lights on his Christmas tree. I think almost 2,000 lights on his Christmas trees and he was seeing this sort of dazzling spectacle and it gave birth to two bodies of work. One was a series of collages that he did by taking some of the broken ornaments and he made collages of them that he in turn turned around and gave as Christmas gifts. Another was back in, in 1968 he started a body of work called Silent Light and what you see behind here is one of the silent light paintings and you can see sort of the obvious reference to these sort of uh, orbital type of circular things but what I really want to draw your attention to is the, the, the painstaking detail in these works. Of course there was a lot of taping off done in this work but the important things is the sort of the density of the composition is that um, not only is it dense from left to right, the top to bottom, but it's a very dense composition in its form of in and out, sort of the breathing of the space of the thing. There was what they call the optical space in the, in the particular picture. So you get this multi-dimensional quality about them. And you can see they're absolutely uh, riveting and labor intensive. I'm now standing in front of a park painting, another component to this four-part show, Unlocking the 70s. This is, painting was painted in 1971. Um, there's two things I want to tell you about the parks. One, there was sort of um, a stance that uh, Harold was taking on uh, the kind of the industrialization of the world that we live in and that our, our national and provincial, our public park space is, is being reduced. And I think <laughs> pictorially this is sort of emphasized by these large kind of fields, relatively fat, flat fields of color. And in this particular one, many of them are more geometric than this one, uh, you have this sort of circular element in the middle that is, um, instead of being flat, it's quite textured and painted with impasto. It has a wonderful quality. So sort of, uh, I suppose one could interpret it as a, sort of this encroachment of this sort of uh, field uh, in, and the parks are now become something isolated, in this case in the middle of the, the canvas in a circular format. With of course complementary colors, you know, this orangey red and the green and you can see that the vibration between these because of them being complementary colors you get what's called a color jump. So sometimes it almost looks like the green is jumping over into the orange and the orange is jumping into the, the green. That's just be a nature of when two opposing colors are vibrating against one another and they comes up with a very interesting dynamic composition. Okay, the last component to this exhibition is of course the snap paintings. I have shown the snap paintings before. 
but I have here a wonderful selection of small format snap works. Uh, the snap paintings were created like a, a carpenter would create a chalk line. So literally a, a, a piece of string is drawn across the surface of the work. It's made taut because he had an apparatus with a series of holes and dowels and then he would load the string with paint and then pop, snap it, then he'd have to of course rejig it. Now when people are confronted with these works they, they're, they're a little bit uh, bamboozled. They have a sort of a almost a textile quality to them but I assure you it, it is paint and of course if you take a close inspection of it you will see that uh, highly textured striations of paint. Of course there's areas here where he's masked off where he's come in and did some in painting a little bit of flatter work. So they basically work like any other painting, an interesting composition of course, certain amount of tension, but the texture and the, the, the technique is wholly original. I don't know if anybody's ever done anything like this. And as you can see they have a seemingly timeless quality to them. Um, these paintings were made over 40 years ago and looks like they were made yesterday.